Today we're having a look at this. This is a Microsoft keyboard and mouse dongle which has seen better days. Unfortunately, one of our customers took their laptop out of their bag a little too quickly and managed to actually bend this dongle and now it's not being detected by the computer anymore. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work. I'm gonna take it apart and see if it's actually physically damaged in a way that I can repair. But if I can't, then I'm just gonna do a tear down on it so you can see what's inside it. Let's get it under the microscope. And the problem we have with the microscope is it doesn't have a very wide uh, field of view. So under the microscope, this small nano dongle looks huge. And that's from one side of the plug to the other. I think what I've got to do is undo the two little pins uh, there and there, and then I should be able to slide the whole lot out. Let's get this under there. And we'll do this one first. They're quite, it's quite strong metal, I think, so. Might, oh no, we're all right. I thought it might take some doing, but that one's out. And that one's out. Let's see what's inside. That's what's inside it. Wow, that's really, that is really, really bent. I think I'm gonna have to get that under the microscope and have a look. Oh yes, I can just now see a load of damage to it. If we look on here, we can see a line there. So a crack in the PCB there. And there's also another one there. Now this might not be, I mean, I might be able to just bridge over that. Let's be able to bridge over that one, perhaps. Pins look all right. See if we can get those into, uh, into focus. Again, I could reflow those. I might straighten it out and just see if I can reflow those on there, maybe. Yeah, you can see where it got, uh, got crunched there. Yeah, those pins do, they do look okay. Let's bring the brightness up on that a little bit again. Maybe not that end one. Okay, so was it even connected to anything? No, that's not connected to anything. It doesn't go to a pad. Ah, okay, look at all those. Looks like they could all do with reflowing. Yeah, they're all, all of those look like they're disconnected. You can actually see a gap in between them there. It would be rude not to try and reflow them, so let's give that a go. I'm going to put a bit of, uh, bit of flux on it. The trouble is when stuff's this size, a little flux goes a long way. This will be using the JBC iron because we're doing micro soldering. And first of all, we're just going to just get that flowing a little bit. There we go. And now we'll just see if we can reflow those back on there. And while I'm here, I may as well do these ones around the side as well, I think. Can't hurt. 
these sort of chips are very easy to uh, to reflow. Now let's have a look at those. Um, okay, so we can see there's something happening there as well. But again, it might not be important because that looks like a ground plane. Oh, we're going to see a couple of ones there as well. Wow. So it looks like we've got a couple of breaks here. There's one there and one there. I might reflow that as well. But I think let's see if we can get those redone. Let me just scrape off the mask. Same with that one. Hopefully we can just flow over the top of them. They don't actually look too bad now. That little dollop of flux on there. Now I do have some a thin wire I could probably put across those. Get that dust out of the way. Yeah, they might not be broken, but a little bit of flux won't hurt. over these tracks here. They do actually look all right. And while we're here, let's do that as well. It looks a lot better on that side. And those are reflowed now. I think I'm going to give that a clean up. I might try it in something. Give it a bit of a clean. I'm going to half put it back together and see if it goes bong. What I'm going to do now then I think is glue this bit onto that bit because that's the piece of the USB carrier so I'm going to glue that into there then put it back into there and then go and plug it into a computer just for that I'm going to use a little bit of super glue shouldn't need too much yeah that's probably <laughs> probably way too much already so we can take a little bit of that off So what we need to do is we're just using it to hold that in place. Stick that on top, 20 seconds that should be done. Wipe that bit of extra glue off, making sure we don't get it on the USB connector. and I'm just going to let that dry properly. While we're waiting for that to set, why don't we have a look at some of the components that are on here. You've got the usual 
the usual passives, resistors and capacitors and the like. That there, I'm guessing, is a 16, 16 megahertz crystal. There's really not an awful lot. Well, there's nothing really to this. I guess it's all done in the, the chip. These components here look like they're part of the RF stage. So they are probably coils or filters, one of the two. And this is what's doing all the grunt work, this NRF chip. And it says NRF. And I don't know whether they're supposed to be something there. I think it's just NRF N. Can't really see it very well on the uh, on the microscope camera. And then it says LU1PA. 1726EG and a quick Google reveals that the NRF24LU1 is a single chip 2.4 GHz transceiver with USB microcontroller and OTP memory. And if we have a look at the applications note, yeah, compact USB dongles for wireless peripherals, mouse, mice keyboards, remotes. Um, yeah, yeah, this is a dedicated dongle chip basically. It's going to go over all of them again. And that didn't work, so I'm just going to go over these ones down at the side here as well. Because they're looking a little bit shabby. They look a lot better now. Getting my bloody thing into focus, it's uh, good fun with this microscope. They look a lot nicer. What about these ones? I wouldn't expect these ones to be too affected. But again, I can see copper, so I'm going to put a little bit of uh, flux on that and just do those as well. These are quite solderable by hand. I think that looks a lot better than it did. I'm going to clean it up and then try it again. And that still doesn't work. Not too upset about it, to be honest, because the teardown was interesting. The problem is you never know what layers it's broken internally either when you do this sort of thing. I don't know whether just to reflow a couple of those components, maybe. While we're at it, let's do a few of the other bits and pieces around here. It can't hurt, because it doesn't work anyway. That one was a little bit loose. That chip looks much better than it did before but the fact that it's not even being detected by a computer is not not a good sign if we look over here again I don't know whether those are I think that's just crap there it's 
not a crack or anything. So these are the power lines here, so these are either resistors or they're, they're coils or filters rather. This looks like the ground, it's going on this ground plane here. So this is the positive coming off of there. I wonder what this was for here. If we look over here, this is obviously the the positive here, going into either a current limiting resistor or a filter. And then down on this side is the ground. And these are two data lines here and here. I mean that filter or resistor was a little bit a little bit loose. I could easily stop it working. Let's try it now. I'm having another look at this board and I think I can see another issue here, which is there might be a broken track uh, just here. It doesn't look very happy. I think I might scrape that off and see if I can rejoin it. In fact, if I look at the end of that, the end of that capacitor there, yeah, that's seen some force. You can see it's kind of split, split up the top there. I think I'm going to reflow that, and I'm going to grab my multimeter and uh, just see if there's a connection between uh, this pin here and that capacitor there. But yeah, that looks like a break in the track to me. Can't see an awful lot else really wrong with it. I mean that track is clearly not happy, you know, clearly not happy, but it's not actually broken I don't think, because we have continuity across it. Let's redo that capacitor. I think this one might be a bit of a rabbit hole. I'm not going to go too far down it, because I've got other things to be doing with my evening. But we'll do these, certainly do that one. And these are the pins that are likely to have been most damaged. May as well do that cap. Oh, hello. Okay, that one's completely disintegrated. I wonder if I've got another one I can put on there. I've got some very small capacitors here for iPad repairs. This might do it. These things are absolutely tiny. Well. Not a perfect fit, but it's close enough. Let's see if we can get that on there. I'll we'll have to do a bit of jiggery pokery. God damn it. Put that to one side. Anything will make it easier for me to resolder this one in. And again, I've got to get the other one back in. I think I might get some hot air involved. Come on, Cap, on you go.
I really like the way they they more or less seat to themselves. Let's clean off that other pad. Yeah, they're clearly not happy. And we're going to put another iPad cap on there. These things are unbelievably small. I'm going to reflow this one. Look at that, the surface tension just pulls it into place. Very nice. I'm going to uh, glue this up and yeah, see if I can uh, see if I can get it to work. Because I plugged both those items into the Mac and it got detected. I'm going to clamp this together in there. Oh, super glue. Mm -mm. We'll clamp that in there. And I'm going to leave that to set. Once this is set, I'm then going to glue it into here. And then I'll be able to properly plug it in. Right, hopefully that's done. And now I need to glue this into here. So the plastic bit goes in the bottom of it, which is there. So I kind of got to go in there and then I've got to hold it in with something. Shame because it's held in quite well up until it kind of goes to the end there. Get some lovely super glue on there. It's going to sound a little bit Welsh. So we'll put a bit of glue on there. We can then slide all that into there. Can't quite tell what side it actually is. That's curved, so probably probably that side. Put that there. We'll hold that down for 20 seconds or so, maybe a little bit longer just to be on the safe side. It is Poundland super glue. Now that's been held in place. I'm going to put that in there and I'm just going to leave that like that for five minutes. Okay, that should be set. Let's go and plug it into a laptop. It's the next day now, and I now have access to the mouse, the keyboard, and a computer to plug the dongle into. Let's go ahead and do that. It made the bingle noise, which is a good sign. That is the uh, technical term for it in the IT world. Let's see if the mouse works. Yay, we have a working mouse. Uh, let's see if the keyboard works. The keyboard works. And let's just do a few, just do that top row. Woo. That looks like it's working absolutely fine. Now that that's repaired, I can go ahead and design a 3D printed dongle case 
in Fusion 360 and printed on my 3D printer. And this is what I ended up with. This is essentially two rectangles, one inside another. You've got this one here, this is the outer one. This is the same size as the original dongle. There's a slightly recessed one here, which is where the USB plug will actually kind of sit on top of, you know, the back end of it. And the circuit board for the dongle will sit in here. My plan is to fill this section up here with uh, epoxy resin and this section here as well, and then just push the entire assembly into there and let it set. And this is the finished article. Nice 3D printed case. Very, very similar to the original. Printed at 0.1 layer height, and the dongle hardware is epoxy glued into it. And what's really nice is it still fits in the mouse like that. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.